I'm pretty happy with it. I don't really like that you can't like really see that like there is a difference like in like the scales. Because I filled in the actual scales instead of like everything around it. <laughs> Yeah, I wanted it to be like really simple, you know. So I tried like various versions and stuff. And in the end I landed on this, which I'm perfectly content with. I'm kind of worried about my voice for Apollo Justice because he's known to be loud. <laughs> like he yells a lot. Also, um, what I noticed... I thought you said, eat his boy, he yell, and I'm like, huh, what did you mean? So, you're ready then, Fleur? For me to start a new game? Of Apollo Just Deals. Heck yeah. Sweet. I don't even know if I need a... A guide for this to be honest with you since I like recently played this so okay let's go turn about Trump sure let's fucking go also Biden <laughs> Showdown time. You lose. <laughs> Beautiful voice acting on my part. I know. I am well aware. I seem to be in a bit of trouble. Something like that. Dead. Someone hit him. Hard. Me? Please. The cops should be here any minute. I'm in your hands. Should it come to that? Panicked. Palm sweaty. Knees heavy. <laughs> no, wait, what's it? Was it uh, arms? No. Palm sweaty. Arms heavy. Knees weak. Arms spaghetti. Mom spaghetti. <laughs> arms spaghetti. <laughs> Can admit it. I'm nervous. Ah, good morning. G good morning, sir. You look tense, Justice. Wound up tight? W wound up, sir? No! I'm loose. I'm fine. That screeching noise. Is that your voice? I suppose it is to be expected. Your first trial, and it's a homicide, I guess. Justice doesn't start small, huh? Eh? I'm fine! I got up at 5 a.m. to do my course of steel voice workout! I'm fine! Ah, uh, that explains it. I did detect a certain rasping quality to your screech. <clears throat> I overdid it again. As you know, 
Your client today is a good friend of mine. I wouldn't want to let him down, if you get my drift. Drift gotten, sir! I'm all over that drift! As it happens, I dined with him the night of the murder. We can't let this case fall through. Yes! Yes! I'm fine, sir! One more thing. Don't say you're fine quite so much. People might take you the wrong way. Mm -hmm. I'll be preparing our case. You might want to introduce yourself to the client. My name is Apollo Justice. If it isn't clear already, I'm a new attorney. And today is my first trial. N not that I'm worried or anything. The defendant has been accused of murder. My boss wants to help him out, of course, and so do I. I mean, there's no way he did it. Not him. No way. Whoa. Good, uh, morning. Morning. It's all up to you today. First trial. Nervous. Meeting him. Cardiac arrest. I think I'm supposed to say something. Uh, help. So you're... Fine! I I'm fine! Huh. Mr. Fine, is it? Huh. I did remember you having an odd name. Well, we're off to a great start. Um, are you sure you're okay? I mean, with me? Mr. Gavin is a top-notch defense attorney. And he's your friend, so why... We'll see. Eh? You can do it. Be confident. Um, I... I'm really sorry this happened to you. I mean... I mean, I... It's time. Shall we? I yes, sir! Okay. I need to focus. First trial. Here comes justice. The court is now in session. The prosecution is ready, Your Honor. Uh, the defense is uh, fine. I mean, ready, Your Honor. <laughs> Mind going blank. Don't panic. Uh, too late. Your name was Mr. Justice, and this is your first trial. Y yes, Your Honor, but I'm fine, really. Are you quite sure? Your voice sounds a bit strained. He is. I love my little nugget so much. It became a, a mop. <laughs> Ahem. Uh, Mr. Gavin. Yes, Your Honor. I was under the impression that you would be heading up this case. That was my intention, yes. However, a defense attorney must always see to his client's wishes. And my client specifically requested Mr. Justice. Well, of course, he wants justice. But we entrust this case to the Screenhorn. Why? It's just the graphics. <laughs> well, actually, he is older, but... <laughs> I do not exaggerate when I say that you are the best defense attorney in town, Mr. Gavin. Okay, so Gavin's got trial experience, fine. But does he have cords of steel? <laughs> <laughs> and let's begin. The defendant may, may enter the courtroom. This is truly an unfortunate, fortunate turn of events. I'm sorry we had to meet again under these circumstances. Long time no see, Mr. Wright. Let's put the past behind us, shall we? These days, I'm merely Phoenix Wright. Piano player! Just waiting for the stream to catch up. My first thought when I played this game, when I when I first played it, yes, you can say it now. <laughs> Finally, what happened? That's what this game is all about. Almost, anyways. Yeah. So, I'm not gonna say what happened quite yet. We will get to that soon. Um, but yeah, when I first played this game. I was like, who the fuck is this 
what was his name? Um, God, I fucking know his name. What did I forget about it? Just oh my god, I was. I thought he looked so much like Colin Morgan. <laughs> and I was like, who is this Colin Morgan looking motherfucker? And it was a Mr. Right. And I'm like, huh? <laughs> what the fuck? <laughs> oh, I, I wish. Oh my god. Oh, you have no idea what's what you're in for. You're in for a journey. <laughs> Mr. Wright, how could this have happened? I won't speak of it further, then. If the prosecution would be so kind as to explain the charges, Mr. Payne. To think, I thought you entered this room a fresh attorney. And now I'll see you leave in chains. Ah, oh, Winston Payne. Subtle as ever, I see. Ahem! <laughs> the crime occurred at the Borscht Ball Club. A Russian restaurant. The defendant, Phoenix Wright, to the victim, a customer. And he hit him, wham, on the head, smack, killed him cold. Hmm, a customer at the restaurant, you say? And the defendant, you say he was the pianist for the club, it seems. Phoenix Wright, a pianist. This is the weapon that took the wi wi victim's knife. A bottle of grape juice. Grape juice is apparently our defendant's drink of choice. That's okay. It's perfectly understood. Why do you think I gave him that kind of voice? The court accepts the deadly bottle as evidence. Something to note, Justice. All evidence is filed in the court record. Yes, I know that. Make a practice of checking it frequently. Court record. Right. I've heard of that. Use the court record button. Yeah, 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 yeah. I'm confident in your ability. Yeah, yeah, okay. Right. The court record button. I know, I know, I know, I know, I know, I know. So the victim was a customer at this restaurant. Okay, let me fucking check this, I guess. Smith's author's report. Shady Smith. That's not shady at all. This is the time of death, April 17, between 1.45 a.m. and 2.15 a.m. Because of the cerebral hemorrhaging resulting from a blunt trauma to forehead. Okay. And the crime photo. And the deadly bottle. Look, we can do this again. Hold on, I know I can tilt it somehow, but I don't know how. That's not it. Grape juice, how long has this been? Has it been since I drank grape juice? Apparently, it's Mr. Wright's favorite drink. I wonder how well it goes with borscht. Maybe I just can't tilt it quite yet. I haven't learned it or something, I don't know. Because I'm, I'm trying all the buttons that I currently have at my disposal and it's not working. And the attorney's badge. We. So the victim was a customer at this restaurant. But just who was this, um, Shady Smith fellow? I believe he was a traveler, Your Honor. A, a traveler. And according to his passport, he had been out of country. Out of the country for a number of years. He had only returned to the, this country recently. Though his place is of residence, it's unclear. And he had some sort of connection with the defendant. That, too, is unclear at present, Your Honor. We believe they first met at the Borscht Ball Club on the night of the crime. If they only just met, then why murder? Perhaps the victim slighted the defendant's piano player. Plain. That doesn't appear to have been the case. No, the motive had nothing to do with the defendant's lack of playing skill. At least not piano playing. I'll let this photo explain what I mean. Oh, I already had it, apparently. As we can see, a game of poker was in progress at the scene of the crime. Wait a second. Missing poker gambling. That's a crime in and of itself. Indeed, it appears our defendant has fallen to become the basest sort of criminal. It is true that the defendant was engaged in a game of poker with the victim. Hold on, wait, I gotta open st Streamlabs again.
do, 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 do. I gotta add Kristoff to this as well. <laughs> Enable. Save. There we go. Now we're good to go. Yet it was only that. A game. In the purest sense, a competition, your honor. A competition? Yes. A test of wits. A silent clash of passions. Only the cards, their backs, wreathed in blue flame, know its final outcome. Eh. Come again? The cards on the table had blue backs, your honor. I believe the defense was waxing poetic in an attempt to mis mystify those present. And impress women. That will be our first order of business here, then. To find out more about this fatal game of cards. Very well, defendant. You will testify to the court about the poker competition held the night of the crime. My pleasure. This is it. My first trial. Here goes nothing. I am a pianist by trade. Yet I can hardly play at all. My real job is to take on interested customers over the poke over at the poker table. The room where we play and the competition in there are the club's main attractions. And the rules are simple. We play a game of poker using two decks of cards. That's all it is. A game. And our customers are happy. Hmm. And a pianist who can't play piano. Better than a defense attorney who can't defend. Very well. The defense may begin the cross-examination. Right, Your Honor. My first cross-examination. I'll blow it. Are you all right? You're sweating bullets. Bullets? Where? It's a figure of speech, Justice. Your voice sounds strained and raspy, too. My brain feels strained and raspy, sir. You watched me perform cross-examinations many times. But you've never done one yourself, have you? Care for a refresher? The do, should I ask Mr. Gavin for a refresher? No, I don't need it, no thanks. We good to go. No need for help here, sir. I think I got this one covered. I think you'd better do more than think. You know it, or you do not. I'm fine. The cords of steel are ready for battle. Look at his face. Oh, he face. Oh, oh he chicken. He, he adorable chicken boy. My weapons. Press and present. Find any inconsistencies in, and any lies in the testimony and reveal them to the court. That is cross-examination. Learn it. Know it. Do it. Work it. Make it. <laughs> Do it. <laughs> Make sense. Inconsistencies. Lies. Phoenix Wright. As if. Phoenix Wright would never lie and it's up to me to prove it. The defense may begin the cross-examination. Hmm. Two decks of cards. Okay, I need to press several of them. I see. Let me just get through all of this. I can't imagine Mr. Wright lying in a testimony. Isn't it a little early to be jumping to conclusions. This is your first cross-examination. Take it slow. If you need more information, don't forget to press. A skull necklace. Right. I got it. I'm fine. Time to listen to the testimony again. Okay, a second. I'll press that. They pay you just to play poker. That would seem to be the case. I am a professional, after all. Ma, do I detect pride in that statement? It's just hard for an honest, hard-working member of society like me to imagine. Yes. Her imagination was always a bit limited, Winston. What? I've played poker for seven years in that little room. And I've never lost. Once. What? You see why the customers come now? Defeat the undefeated poker champion. 
<laughs> he won't eat it. <laughs> why is that take Papa? Because <laughs> why not? It also has the same badge that Emma has on her clothes, or had on her clothes, I guess. Defeat the undefeated poker champion. It's quite a draw. That is, I'm quite a- I'm quite a draw. Wait, you never lost once? Not even one time? As I said, I'm a professional. He's played poker for seven years and not lost once. Is that even possible? The room in the crime scene photo is an attraction. It has quite a history, actually. The Borscht Bowl Club used to be a gathering spot for black market types back in the day. Black market? Well, in the past, things like the black market are only on the silver screen nowadays. Suffice it to say, that there were a lot of deals being made under the table. Right there, in that room. A smoky room, gambling hoods, you know. Just looking at this picture makes me feel bad. Bosses gather around the table, cutting deals safe from the eyes of the law. Meanwhile, a goon keeps washed through the small window. I can practically picture it now. The window does look like it would be good for keeping a lookout of, oh, but little else. Brr. The room had a few other secret, tr few other tricks to it. It was common knowledge to our regulars. At any rate, they come to play poker in a room steeped in history. Despite the dark past, it was all just good, clean fun. Hold on. I can't check my profiles yet. Okay, whatever. Two decks of cards. A simple measure to prevent cheating. If you alternate two decks, no one can slip in cards. And there's something else I noticed. In addition to the cards on the table, there are some lying scattered on, on the floor. Precisely. Cards on the table, cards upon the floor, each one forming a complete deck. A crime scene painted blue by a sad sweep of cards. It's poetic, really. Incidentally, we used two types of cards at the club. One deck of cards was red, the other blue. Hmm. As I recall, in poker you make five card hands. I can see how it would be easy to cheat. <laughs> yes. Game of hands. This competition you're talking about. And I believe the court understands the nature of the game sufficiently. Th that's right! It was a simple game after all. Are you sure? Huh? People are not murdered over simple games, Miss Justice. Defendant, you were in the room the very moment the crime occurred. Yet you claim no connection to the crime. That's strange. What's strange? I was testifying about the competition that night. Asking me about the crime at this point is against the rules, Your Honor. Of course, I expected to hear a cry of objection from the defense. Ugh. I completely let that one slip by. Don't despair yet, Justice. S sir? Right. There's something I'd like to make clear. Namely, your connection to the case at hand, and I'd like to hear it from you. Sure, why not? Very well, the defendant will amend his testimony. Just one little press. And I got myself a whole new testimony. I plead silence regarding the murder, but I will say I never touched the murder weapon. Mm -mm. Never touched the murder weapon, but your prints are on it. So you say you didn't touch the murder weapon? This grape juice bottle, right? So I said. Something the matter, Mr. Justice? <laughs> Too bad our new defense attorney never learned how to play dumb. What's this, Mr. Payne? I examined the bottle in question, you see. And it was covered with the defendant's fingerprints. A 
Apollo scrim. He's scrim. Objection! No need to shout, Mr. Justice. I can hear you just fine. <laughs> Excess yelling can damage the judge's ears. And our case. But what about my cords of steel? Any Anyway! What's so strange about fingerprints on a bottle in a restaurant? Well, that's true. The prints alone don't prove... No, they wouldn't prove a thing if they were normal fingerprints. Huh? But the fingerprints on the murder weapon were upside down. Upside down? What does that mean? It means he was holding the bottle inverted. And there can only be... There can be only one reason for that. Yes. To bring someone with a bottle. <laughs> Mr. Gavin, I think things just took a turn for the worse. Oh, I see no problem, Justice. Huh? The only thing that matters is the truth. There is a good reason for everything, you'll see. <laughs> How do you know? Listen, when you grab a bottle... Like, from below you. You- you grab it like this. I wouldn't know, because I have plenty of bottles. <laughs> Just coke bottles. Defendant, can you explain your fingerprints on this bottle to the court? I stand by my plea of silence regarding the murder. For now. Hmm, not very cooperative, are you? This could hurt your case. I'm sure he's uncooperative because he's hiding something. There must be some reason. Your Honor, you seem to have forgotten something. And what might that be, Mr. Gavin? On the night of the crime. Who was it who reported the murder to the police? R reported Well, that was the defendant, Mr. Wright, but still, that... R really? Um, yes, well, according to the case file, the murder was reported from near the scene by a call from the defendant's cell phone. Near the scene? Let's take a look at the diagram of the murder scene, shall we? The victim was murdered in a small room in the basement two floors down from ground level. Of course, cell phones can't get reception so far down. The defendant used the stairs in this hallway to go above the ground. The call came from the first floor of the restaurant. I see, and this is the phone that made the call. The defendant could have just fled the seeds of the crime if he so chose. But he fulfilled his duty as a citizen and reported it to the authorities. And you claim he is being uncooperative. <laughs> I saved Mr. Gavin. Better not waste this. I think the prosecution has toyed with our client enough for the time being. T toyed? I assure you, no one is more serious about... What was it you said? The defendant was in the room the very moment that the crime occurred. How can you possibly know this? That's a good question. How indeed? The answer is simple, Your Honor. The prosecution has a v decisive witness. <laughs> You're as good as they say you are. So someone else was in the room the night of the crime. I must mean they witnessed the crime. Everything up until now has been a warm with justice. Are you ready? Very well. The prosecution may call its first witness to the stand. The witness will state her name and profession. H hold on just a moment. Where's the witness? I surmise that she has been frightened by the defense's demonic looking horns. I used a little hair gel. Relax, people. Have no fear. If any horns point in your direction, this court will cut them off. You. Uh, sure. I swear it on my gavel. Please, come out. Isn't violence against hair a crime, Your Honor? Well... If you are sure, it's okay. Uh 
Him. Now, the prosecution. Oh, wait a minute. Would the prosecution care to explain the witnesses? Um, paraphernalia? Um, yes. She is a professional, Your Honor. These, those are merely the tools of her trade. And that would be... My name is Olga Orly. I am employed as a waitress in the worst bull club restaurant. <laughs> then... Why the camera? Of course, it is my pride to serve worst that is naming the restaurant. But I also perform, how I said, other service. Other service, huh? A Russian performing other service. Really? Really now? I wonder what that could be. And I take it one of those other services is taking the customer's pictures. Duh, duh. Like, for example, this one. Th that's the defendant. Indeed, on the night of the murder. Man in white hat is one who was gone kaput. Indeed, that is the victim. Order! Order! This is quite a piece of evidence to casually drop into our laps. It's rigging elections. It is the same way as I drop cold burst of bowl of burst on laps of customers casually. Hmm. Then the court will casually accept this new evidence. Now, witness, where were you at the time of the murder? I was in the room, the hideout, we call it. Excuse me? The hideout? It is the room where famous gangster bad guy was, was arrested. It's the room where murder took place. What? You look of utter surprise. It is lovely. I will post by courtroom door later for you. Da, da. Photos will be numbered and you will write which one you want copy of. So there were three people in the room at the time of the crime. The victim, Shady Smith, Mr. Wright, and... Holka Orley, our witness. And if Mr. Wright isn't the killer, that means... Very well, witness. You will testify to the court about that night's events. <sighs> that night, customer asked me to deal cards for Guillaume. It was cold. Both players played with hats on, duh. The victim, he plays whole time with his hand on locket at his neck. Then last hand is done, but something terrible has happened, duh. The man flew at victim and is strangling him to death. Strangling him? I thought it was hit. Hmm. Incidentally, who won the game? Isn't it obvious? The winner was the victim, Mr. Smith. That's just... That's ridiculous! Um, because... Because Mr. Wright can't lose! Ahem. <clears throat> Justice? Maybe you can come up with a more legitimate objection. But... He hadn't lost in seven years! Take it from me, kid. It happens. I didn't lose a case my first seven years as prosecutor. Either. Incidentally... I have some evidence here. These are the poker chips as they lay at the very moment of the crime. The hand and chips on this side belong to the defendant, Mr. Wright. Those on the far side belong to the victim, Mr. Smith. Chips, you say? Duh, I mean, yes. Imagine that poker is war. Your hand is your army, and the chips are the spoils. I, I know that. After all, in my youth, I was known as the poker head of courtroom number three. I think he means poker face. There we go. <laughs> oh, God. Hmm, looking at this picture, it does seem that most of the chips are on the victim's side of the table. Very well. The defense may cross-examine the witness. Both players play with hat on. Mm -hmm. 
Last time he's done, but something terrible has happened. The man flew the victim and strangling him to death. Oh, really? Objection! What? Dumbass. Ah. Okay. Okay, we get it! Hold on, wait. Thank you. No. Ah! Okay, whatever. Yeah, I got- I got it! <laughs> this and the autopsy report, dumbass. Really? Strangle, you say? That's odd! Duh, normal customers only choke on borscht. Oh, I mean this report shows that the victim died of a blow to the head! <laughs> Ms. Orly! Really now? Did you witness the crime? I love her, actually. Like, she's so cute. Cute little Russian. Hmm. Looking at the picture, it doesn't seem like he was hit. He's still wearing his hat and everything. Yet, yeah, it is a fact that he was hit, Your Honor. Here's a photo we took of the victim with his hat off during our investigation. Well, that's quite shocking, isn't it? This head certainly was hit. But, but, I have seen it happen. The defendant, he lunged at victim, his neck. Oh, really, Miss Orly? I think you, I think I've caught you in your own lie this time. Justice, I admire your enthusiasm, but perhaps you should think this through once more. What do you mean? I found a contradiction. There's one more thing in her testimony that troubles me. Very well. It seems we should continue the cross-examination. There's such a thing as thinking too much. This horse is dead. Let's stop beating it. There's such a thing as thinking aloud too much, too. Okay. After the defendant tried to strangle the victim, he hit him with a bottle. Oh, wait, uh... God, this is even worse! <laughs> yeah, okay. Okay, third statement, that's it. The victim. Oh, he plays whole time. And then, uh, crime photo two, because he's not wearing the locket this time. I mean, I'm not gonna play with, with the guide. I mean, plays with guide anyway. <laughs> you know, there was one curious part in her testimony, just like Mr. Gavin said. But what does it mean? Mr. Justice, would you care to explain what it is you're... Take thinking so intensely about. Recall the testimony, Your Honor. The victim played with his hand on locket at his neck. I believe she said. I hope you aren't about to raise an objection to the witness's grammar. No, but look at this photograph. Look at this photograph. <laughs> Do you see a locket on the victim's neck? Well done, Justice. I'm impressed. I knew you'd be able to handle this. But, but what does it mean? If we are to believe this witness' testimony as is, then the locket disappeared following the victim's death. Lockets don't just disappear, Your Honor. It's quite simple when you think about it. If the locket is gone, someone must have taken it off, no? Taken it off? Wait, you don't mean... The defendant wasn't strangling the victim at all. He was taking off his locket. Wouldn't that explain it? Huh! Ah. Uh. Defendant, what do you have to say to this? Say. Yes? I just noticed this, but... You have something hanging around your neck, don't you? Oh, you mean this? Yes, it's a locket. 
with a photograph inside. A photo. My daughter. Come again? Mr. Wright, you have a daughter. We confirmed it at the time of the arrest. And the picture in the locket is indeed Mr. Wright's daughter. So Mr. Wright has a locket too. Why don't I buy that this is just a coincidence? Waiting for Chad to catch up. <laughs> Papa, <laughs> it makes sense. Well now, if the results of this poker game led to the murder, perhaps we should hear a bit more about the outcome of the game. Further testimony won't really be necessary. It's clear the defendant lost badly. Miss Orley, you will testify to the court about the game played between the victim and defendant. D Duh. The game began with 3,500 points in chip for each man. Those chips come in two sides, small and large. The one who was winning, duh, it was victim. For last hand, defendant play with all chips on table and lose. The moment loss was decided, defendant grabs bottle from table and... Indeed, looking at this picture, it does seem to be a one-sided game. As the court knows, Poker was the defendant's life. Failure must have been a bitter pill to swallow. Ah, how many times have I heard these words? I'd done it in a fit of anger, Your Honor, and now I regret what i done. A common tale, but true. He thinks the judge watches too many old court movies. Mr. Wright said he hasn't lost in seven years. So this testimony must be wrong. Are the chips in this photo? All the chips that were used. Duh, duh. Of course. Something's fishy with these chips. Should I press harder? Yes. Maybe you could explain it. Explain a bit about these chips. I explain? What is there to be explained? Poker chips are poker chips, and they're not fishing chips. Not a chip of the old block. Not a motorcycle cop. Not a. Thanks. Now that I've pressed her, I'd better ask something. What are these chips worth? Are they in dollars or rubles even? Yet, as I have been saying before, it was a game, not gambling. Hard perhaps for capitalists to understand. Two types of chip, 100 point chip and 1000 point chip. It is not money, duh. Justice. When you think of chips, chips? <laughs> Sir, don't you find her comment interesting? More ways than one, sir. I'd have it added to her testimony myself. Well, does the defense want the, def what, want the witness to add it to her testimony? Yes. Do. Yes, I do think this deserves further scrutiny. Add it to the testimony. I wish I knew where I was going with this. I know exactly where I'm going with this, baby boy. It's fine. Very well, witness. If you would be so kind... Duh, your honor. One kind of chip is worth 100 points, the other kind is worth 1,000. Two kinds in all. Okay, so how much does you say that they were worth? Three... Like, the total was 3,500. So... If we count these, one is worth 100, and one is worth 1,000, right? So... Does that add up? Is my question. Oh, 
how many are there? There are 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. What kind of math are you doing? There are 10 big ones. Yeah, so 10,000, but... Well, actually, the, the so, sorry, the total is supposed to be 7,000. Because it's 3,500 per man. <clears throat> So, if there are 10,000... Plus... 600... 10,600. That doesn't add up, does it? Listen, this is, this is easy, easy math, okay? But, so we know that. <laughs> I even chose biology not to do math. Listen, this is easy math. That's coming from me, all right? I fucking suck at math. I once said, what was it What I said? Two times eight is forty or something. I said some bullshit like that anyways. Okay. So if we assume the biggest one is the biggest amount, so a thousand, and then we have ten thousand six hundred, but that doesn't add up. But what if we use the smaller ones and consider them the thousand thousand chips? Then it's one, two, three, four, five, six thousand plus ten times one hundred that's a thousand that's seven thousand I'm sure it was the victim who won absolutely sure It seems our new attorney is a bit confused. A glance at this picture is enough to tell you who won, if you're not in kindergarten. Ma'am, um, just for safety's sake, could you explain the problem to, co to the court? Of course, Your Honor. In this photo, I see small chips and I see large chips. Tell me, which were worth a thousand points? Why, the big ones, of course, duh! Oh, I thought so too. But then the totals don't add up. The... the Totals? Let's review what the witness told us. Each man started with 3,500 points in chips, and the combined total value of the chips was 7,000 points. Yes, if my calculations are correct, let's see. 3 plus 1 carry the 5. Um, they are, Your Honor. Now, look at this photo that allegedly shows all the chips. If the big chips are worth a thousand points and the small chips are worth a hundred, then you add them up. How much is it? Do it yourself. You aren't in kindergarten, are you? Ten thousand six hundred points. The chips don't add up. This clearly contradicts the witness's testimony. But, but why? How could it be? Exactly, Justice. Now that you know the what, you must determine the why. Right. There's only one possible way to exp explain this contradiction. Both were right. Each man began, began the game with 3,500 points. If all the chips are indeed shown in this photograph, then there can only be one answer. Well, what is it? The value of the chips was the other way around. What? Want to know what I think? The small chips were worth a thousand points, not the big ones. Madness! Utter madness! Show me that photograph of the chips again. 
There are six small chips and ten large chips. Why? That does make 7,000 points when you add them up. Excellent work, Justice. It's almost as though you figured it out by yourself. Well, I'm just glad I was the one who said it. Go to sleep. Good night. <laughs> but, but wait! The value of the chips may be different, but that changes nothing. Indeed. The victim did have the larger number of chips still. Ah! Exactly. If the small chips are a thousand points and the large chips are a hundred, let's do a little math. Add up the points for each side of the table. Yeah. Ah! The victim, Mr. Smith, had 2,900 points and the defendant had 4,100 points. Well now, it seems that Mr. Wright was winning the night that night after all. What? Impossible! My client had even less reason to kill the victim. After all, he was winning. Yeah. Ha. Get him, Apollo. Now, Miss Orly, you must have known the true value of the chips since you were there at the scene of the crime. Weren't you? Uh, Order! Order! It appears our defendant has lost his motive. And Mr. Wright's supposed to defeat. Never happened. We must now ask ourselves whether we can... Excuse me? What is it, Miss Orley? I... I did not want to be saying this, but... Actually, you see, um... See what, Miss Orley? What do we see? In the last hand... There was cheat. A ch cheat? You you don't mean a trick? Wait, or do you mean a scam? They're all the same thing. Yes, there was cheat in last hand. That is why game ends with chips the way uh, chips, chips as they are. Great, just great. First we have lying, now cheating. Well, this case certainly has taken a turn. For the interesting. Witness, you will please testify to the court. Tell us about this cheating in the final hand. The last hand, both men had full house. There is four of each card in deck from heir to king. If you look at both men's hands, cheat is more obvious. In the next moment, game becomes argument, duh. The defendant's trick was exposed. He took a bottle in his hand. Poor Mr. Smith. Miss Orley! Why did you not tell the court about this from the very beginning? I thought I smelled a cover up here. Well, folks, it's time to throw back the covers. Hmm. A full house is a very high-scoring hand. Not easy to make, in my experience. That alone is enough to suspect less than scrupulous tactics. Um, Mr. Gavin? What's a full house? Lawyers these days. You don't know your poker? I can say this bodes well for your case or career. What is this? Some kind of secret court poker ring? Justice, you know the terms one pair, two pair, and three of a kind, yes? Uh, yeah, no problem. Two cards with the same number makes a pair, and three makes three of a kind. Good. Now picture a hand with one pair and one three of a kind. That's a full house. I guess that makes the odd thing! Hmm. That doesn't sound very easy to make, does it? You can see each player's hand in this photo. Wow. They both have full houses. Where is cheat? I'm looking cheat. Can't see cheat. Let me forget. There's an easy way to make a full house. And go undefeated for seven years. You cheat. Ahem. The defense may cross-examine the witness. If he did cheat in the last hand, that still leaves one important question. Mr. Wright lost that hand. Who's ever heard of a professional con man losing when they cheat?
I can't see the cheat at all. How was it clear? Duh. Well, the defendant. He played a fifth ace. A fifth ace? I still remember both hands very well. Mr. Smith's hand had three aces. And Mr. Wright's too. Obviously, cheating was afoot. Or perhaps I should say, a hand. Your Honor, perhaps this can be added to the testimony without Mr. Payne's joke. Very well. The witness will add this detail to your testimony. Please. Mr. Smith's hand has three aces and Mr. Wright's two. It's five aces in all. Uh, I can't really see that. I see four aces. And they're none of the same one. Objection! Objection! It appears the witness is mistaken. Mistaken? But my name. Look, this piece of evidence clearly contradicts what you said in your testimony. That's in the photo of the chips, is it not? Justice, perhaps you ought to explain your point in a way that, it, that the judge can comprehend. In other words, use your finger to point out, point out your point. Yes, please point out the contradiction in this photo. A particular point contradicts the witness's testimony. He said that he had... Miss Orley, in your testimony, you made the following claim. Mr. Smith's hand had three aces. But as you can clearly see, the victim's hand only held two aces. Well, maybe the witness was simply confused. Perhaps it was the defendant's hand that, that held the third ace in question. Take another look at the evidence. As you can see, the defendant also had two aces in his hand. Where's this fifth ace? I see cheating, all right? And it's going on right here in this courtroom. You fucking tell him, Apollo. Two aces in each player's hand. Does make four aces total. Hardly proof of cheating. Wait, please. It is true. I have seen it. The fifth ace. There was cheating. I swear to you. That's odd. She must be lying. Yet she's the most sincere I've seen her all day. You're right to trust your instincts. Mr. Gavin? Who knows what lies in store for us in the trial ahead. Your Honor, if I may, I have a suggestion. What might that be, Mr. Gavin? If you don't mind, perhaps we might examine the actual cards. And the cards? Mr. Payne. No. Oh, yes? The player's hands at night were set aside as evidence, were they not? The defense would like to request that the cards be shown to the court. Very well. The prosecution will submit this evidence. Which will you examine? The victim's cards or the defendant's cards? These cards don't prove cheating what's going on. Nothing will. Now, which of these hands is more suspicious? Uh, victim's hand. It was the victim's hand that changed over the course, course of the witness's testimony. The defense requests time to examine Mr. Smith's cards. Very well. Mr. Payne, if you would. Very well. Well, time's a wasting. Get to it, Justice. Y yes, sir! I know how to examine evidence. Okay, now I can use the dials. Cool. Cool, 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 cool. Okay, let's do this. Do I have to use... Are you joking me? Do I really have to use this? Oh, well, look... Would you look at that? That's, uh... What? Your Honor, look at this. One of the victim's cards. The back is a different color. Eh? Eh? That, that's impossible. But I put that card in Wright's hand. Look! What was that, Miss Orley? No, yet, yet. I, I mean, mean, I mean, let's say, uh, yeah, da, I have. Yeah, uh. Your Honor. M Mr. Gavin, yes? Tell me, what is the easiest way to cheat a poker? To... Cheat? I'll tell you. One merely needs a friend. A comrade. 
shall we see? The dealer. Ha. Ha. Wait, so you mean this witness is Orly? She's the cheetah. A professional, I wager. Order! Order! Focus, Justice. Time to take advantage of her. I mean, of her mistake. Apollo? Please. <laughs> he did not just fucking say that. <laughs> Your Honor, please recall the testimony we just heard. That seemed possible, but I put that card in Wright's hand. Ergo, Miss Olga Orly conspired to cheat, not with my client, but with the victim, Mr. Shady Smith. Oh! Not only did she cheat, she cheated poorly. Therefore, it's not hard to imagine an altercation between her and the victim. What? Wait, you don't mean... The defense isn't accusing the witness, Miss Olga Orly, are you? And for justice. There were three people in the room at the time of the incident. And if Mr. Wright isn't guilty, that means... I am. The defense accuses the witness, Miss Olga Orly, of murder. <laughs> oh, thank God the borscht is okay. I was worried about the borscht. Mr. Payne, where is your witness, Miss Olga Orly? Um, it appears she has lost, uh, consciousness, Your Honor. Hmm, Mr. Justice. Your Honor, it seems you've presented a new possibility to the court. One suggesting a connection between the witness and the victim, Mr. Smith. And that means... This court cannot pronounce a verdict for the defendant at this time. <laughs> what? did it. I held out. I see no point in prolonging the trial this day. The prosecution will need to make further inquiries. Objection. Well, that's a familiar one. M Mr. Wright! You can't end the trial here, Your Honor. Not yet. What nonsense is the defendant spewing now? Think. One of the cars has a different color- had a different color back. Don't you wonder what it means? What? what are you doing, Mr. Wright? Raising objections right when you're about to get off the hook? Ridiculous! M Mr. Payne, you of all people should know. Mr. Wright has the talent. For the ridiculous! Perhaps we should get to the bottom of things. Let's clear up the facts about the game that fateful night. As I said- as was said before, you alternated between two decks of cards that night. That was said before! The two, of, two decks of the club have different colored backs. Blue and red. One color per deck. Why use different colored backs? If we use the same color, the two decks might get mixed. Mm, you use different colors and they still got mixed up. We use the red deck for the last game. Hmm, I see. But that's odd. For some reason. I have this impression that you were using the blue cards. Yeah, me too. I'm sure someone said something about blue cards. Whatever. In the end, one card of the wrong color got into the mix. Which means there was cheating. Yes, a card slipped into the deck. Would seem to in indicate cheating. Yet, this card raises two serious questions. Apollo? Y yes! Let's consider the first question, shall we? Think, in the last game, when was the card swapped? When? There are three broad uh, possibilities here. It could have been swapped before the murder, during the murder, or after the murder. Well, yeah, thanks for the news bulletin, Mr. Wright. And of course it was swapped. Oh? It might be as simple as you think, Mr. Payne. Or it might not be. I'd like to hear what Apollo thinks first. When do you think the cards were swapped? When was the card swapped into the deck? After the murder. Perhaps it happened after the murder. What? What's that? Ridiculous! 
What's the point of cheating after the hands have been shown? Let's see. Yes, but tell me, how do you swap cards during the game? I'll take silly over impossible. Take it from me, son. And there's a lot of silly in this world, but very little impossible. Oh? Even when the backs of the cards are a different color? If you pull that during the game, you'll be caught in no time. Ah. Quite true. That will mean that the blue card in question was swapped after the hands were shown. After the murder. Okay, it is going past silly and straight on to crazy. I ask again, what's the point of cheating after the game's over? Who would do that? Indeed, that's one of the mysteries before us. Th th there's another? Yes, a simple yet decisive question must be asked. Who swapped the red card for a blue card? H who? The game and murder is done. done. The victim is dead. Only two remain in the room. Alive, that is. The defendant, Phoenix Wright, and our witness, will go early. Okay, so who was it that swapped the red card for a blue? Someone else. The one who swapped the cards was Mr. Wright, of course. And, well, he doesn't seem like he could have been Olga Orly either. He's so cute, oh my god. Tiny Nugget Boy, love you so much. W what are you suggesting? That's hardly a logical conclusion, I'll admit. As a defense, I think it only makes sense for you to make Miss... To name Miss Orly at this point. Yes, yes, I know. But... But she was the one who dealt the cards, right? I... I just can't believe she would make the mistake of swapping the wrong color card. And if that card was swapped during the game, it'd be obvious. <laughs> Something you'd like to share with the court, Mr. Wright? Oh, my apologies, Your Honor. I was just thinking about how much fun this all is. Fun? How about confusing? I have no idea what the defense is claiming, Your Honor. If the one who swapped the card wasn't the defendant and it wasn't Miss Orley, then who was it? Uh, yeah, well, that is the question, isn't it? Precisely. Huh? I believe we're about to see this case take a new direction. A new direction? We'll find that, indeed. After the murder, someone swapped one of the cards in the victim's hand. And that someone made two critical mistakes. I'm sure you're going to tell us what that the first was swapping the wrong color card. Because the one who did the swap didn't know two colors of cards were being used. The other mistake was the number of the number on the card. Right. The person replaced fifth days with the king. I'm sure whoever swapped it wasn't expecting there to be a fifth ace after all. All they knew was that the game had been won with a full house. So they picked up a king from the table and swapped it in. But, but, and there is one problem. According to our case record, this person doesn't exist. True, not until now. You have to admit the possibility of a fourth person. It's more than a possibility. There was someone else there. That night at the scene of the crime. What? I believe the judge spoke truthfully earlier. You do make trials. Ridiculous, Mr. Wright. This trial has proceeded on one central assumption. Namely, that at the time of the incident, there were only three people in that room. I believe this new evidence, shall we say, overturns that assumption? And the problem is that you chose to conceal this information from the court. I suppose that is a problem, yes. Court is adjourned for a brief recess. Mr. Gavin, I'll see you in my chambers during this recess. Certainly, Your Honor. Very well, the trial will resume in 20 minutes. That was quite unexpected, Mr. Wright. To suddenly claim there was another person at the scene of the crime like that. I must ask, is it the truth? Well now, I think you would know the answer to that. Ah, being mysterious, are we? Sadly, I have no time for mysteries. I'd only ask you leave the defending to your defense in the future. Otherwise, I cannot guarantee the outcome. See, so you haven't mellowed out one bit, Christoph. 
Justice. Y yes, sir! The judge has summoned me to his chambers, so carry on without me. You did well, Apollo. Um, can I ask you something? Sure. That locket you wear. Is that really yours, Mr. Wright? Oh, you're wondering about the victim's disappearing locket. Here, you can take a look at it. That's a picture of my daughter in there. Is <laughs> what? I'm, I'm just surprised to hear you have a daughter. Most people are. Perhaps you'll meet her one of these days. <laughs> Excuse me? One more question. The one who cheated that night. Was it you? What do you think? Huh? I know what happened seven years ago. What I did. It's not unreasonable for you to think I might cheat. I, I never! Honest, but... It is odd that he managed to go undefeated for seven whole years. Want to know something? There's only one game where you can be dealt bad cards all night and still win. Poker. Eh? You see, poker is all about reading your opponent. In that way, it's a lot like a court case. Poker. It's like trial law. Figure out what your opponent is thinking, and you win. Well, yeah, but that's harder than it sounds. Think not. Try as they might to conceal it. Everyone reveals their true thoughts in the end. Your body language can become a valuable source of, source of information. You're kidding! A witness, for instance, Miss Orly. She would touch the back of her neck during certain parts of her testimony. You notice? Uh, no. Come on, who'd notice that? Words, habits, twitches. It's all information for the reading. That's the secret to winning, Apollo. Someone taught me, and now I pass the secret on to you. But, but, I'm not worthy. I mean, there's no way I'll pick up on these signals. No, you can do it. Huh? You just don't know it yet. What's he talking about? But you will, soon. Ah, almost forgot, one more thing, about this case. You should know, I haven't told the truth to anyone yet. What? I knew it. I have my reasons, of course, which shall be revealed. And Apollo, I need you to be there, defending me. It fucking is! I need your power. My, um, power? I had no idea my cords of steel were that special. It's time. The real trial begins now. Do your best. <laughs> so... Who do you reckon is the mother? <laughs> oh, we don't have that. Andrew what? Okay, so he is 33. No. And he was 26. In the last main game. I will. Okay. I was like having a fucking meltdown over this. Let me just fucking. It cannot be Maya. What? <laughs> Help? It's not Maya. Court will now reconvene. Has our witness, Miss Olga Orly, recovered? Let's go to court. Yes, Your Honor. Uh, well, she's regained consciousness. Perhaps we can hear her version of the events again. That's the thing. You see, she is quite fatigued. You're looking a bit fatigued yourself, Miss Mr. Payne. Sadly, fatigue is insufficient grounds for refusing to testify or prosecute. The defense would like to request that Miss Orley take the stand. 
Very well. The witness will take the stand. Perhaps you could repeat your name and profession. Or perhaps you'd rather admit that you're a poor liar and a poorer loser. N n not. Name's Olga Gorley. That's the truth. I'm a pro dealer. People call me Olga Quick Fingers Orly. Oh? Oh, really? Wanna know something else? I'm not really Russian, and my last name sounds like, oh, really? There, that's the truth. I hope you're satisfied. Witness, you will tell the court what you were really up to that night. Fine, I'll talk. We had a plan, see? Let me remind you that you are currently under oath. Any further fabrications will have serious consequences. Fine. Like I said, I'm a pro. That guy, Smith, hired me to do what I do best. I was planted at the Borscht Bowl Club several days prior to the night of the game. As a waitress. So you were in cahoots with the victim. Not that he needed my help. Smith is a well-known poker player in some circles. But winning wasn't the main purpose of this game. It was about destroying a legend. The unbeatable Phoenix Wright. The plan was simple. Elegant, really. You see, we set up a trap of sorts. I was to plan a card in Wright's pocket beforehand. And then deal five aces during one of the, their games. When their hands were revealed, Smith would call him out and search Wright. He would then pull out the planted card and, and the trap would snap shut. You swap the cards! Exposed as a cheater and losing on top of it, it would have made a great double play. Just like that, the legend would be dashed to pieces. Indeed. Getting caught red-handed at cheating would cast doubt on all his prior wins. A seven-year legend, destroyed by one little card. That was the plan. Oh, really, Orly? How droll. But it appears you made quite the mistake. A mistake? I agree. The trap was elegant. Yet, what happened to that planted card? Hey, that's right! He's lucky. I'll give him that. You'd have to be a slip... You have to... You have to be to slip free from the trap laid by Olga Quickfingers Orly. Oh, really? The witness would be much cuter if she dispensed with the evil's mastermind shtick. Cute? Who wants to be cute? I'm not cute. I'm bad. You hear me? Bad. Oh, yes, you are. So very bad. And I love you. <laughs> when you're through being bad, perhaps you could testify to the court. Tell us about this trap and how it was sprung. At night, I planted the card like I was supposed to, and Wright lost the last hand, just like he was supposed to. Then Smith searched him. But the planted card was gone! The trap failed! The next moment, Wright picked up a bottle and swung it. It wasn't me who hit Smith, it was that no good cheating defendant. This part is so cool. I love this so much. Hmm, a surprisingly frank testimony that still leaves us mostly in the dark. The trap was perfect, I tell you. Perfect! If that rotten cheater hadn't messed it up! Look who's talking! Well, a testimony for what it's worth. It's all yours, Mr. Justice. With witnesses like her, who needs criminals? And with defendants like Mr. Wright, who needs prosecutors? No, it's not quite yet. Wait. Isn't that a little odd? That's odd. You searched Mr. Wright uh, thoroughly and found nothing. Which means he didn't cheat. Which means he had no reason to strike the victim. Well. What was that just now? I sensed something. Something wrong, Mr. Justice? No, nothing, Your Honor. I'm just tripping out in the middle of court, you know, like, no big deal. What to do? Should I press her a little harder? Press harder. Miss Orly, you're hiding something! What are you talking about?
talking about? You, you me? Quick fingers, Orly? H hide something? The defense will refrain from baseless accusations. I have one question for the witness, then. You say you saw the moment the defendant hit the victim. Is this true? Of course it's true. I did see it, honest. I saw it when Wright hit him. I saw it. I saw it. With my own eyes. What's this weird vibe I'm getting? A witness, for instance, Miss Orley. She would touch the back of her neck during certain parts of her testimony. Did you notice? Touching her neck, was it? <clears throat> Whoa! What's going on? The sensation. It's coming into focus. There, that twitch. It's so clear. It's like I could perceive her habit like I couldn't before. Gotcha. Oh, like, I'm having chills. <laughs> I'm having chills. <laughs> Miss Orly. Perhaps you're unaware of this yourself. Uh, unaware of what? Whenever you get to a certain part of your testimony, you touch the back of your neck with your left hand. My... My neck? So... So what? What indeed, Justice. I hadn't noticed anything of the sort. When she says that part of the testimony, she's subconsciously recalling something. Her body reacts to the memory, and she touches her neck. I'm sure of it. A memory? Would someone care to explain what, she's bab what he's babbling about? This is highly unusual. But let's ask the defense. You claim the witness is remembering something. Maybe you have evidence of this memory to show us. Her habit is scratching her neck whenever she talks about the moment of the crime. So what would remind her most of the moment of the crime? Miss Orly, whenever you recall the crime that night, you scratch your neck. I've noticed it happens when you think about the moment of the crime. There must be some reason behind this habit of yours. I believe the weapon that left an in erasable impression on your neck was this. Whenever she talks about the moment of the crime, she touches her neck. Yeah, you've already said like five times. And what reminds us more of that moment than this bottle? The murder weapon! But something doesn't fit. If you were, on if you were only the witness to the crime, why would that make you touch your neck like you're in pain? What's he talking about now? It was Mr. Smith, the victim who was hit. Not you. Uh, um. This is a cross-examination, not a cross-wild conjecture. The witnesses' habits, they're completely irrelevant. Justice, I'll admit, I'm a bit confused myself. This is certainly a unique cross-examination. I'll explain later, just trust me. Now is our only chance to break her. Miss Orley, please testify in detail. About the moment of the crime. The very moment. N yet, I am knowing nothing. Um, we know you're not Russian. The witness will testify, please. Now. Uh, fine. He's the one who did it. I didn't let him out of my sight until the cops got there. Oh, really? Objection! Oh, really, Orly? Miss Orly, we have a record here that clearly contradicts what you said. It states that the police were alerted by a report from the defendant. <laughs> and we know that the defendant left the room, climbed the stairs, and made that phone call from the first floor of the Borscht Bowl Club. Duh! So explain how you kept your eyes on the defendant when he left the room entirely. The old man who picked up a bottle and swung it that night wasn't the defendant.
showdown time. Dirty cheat! Check his pockets! Now! It's gone! The card's gone! You're loose. Just then, Smith grabbed the bottle from next to right. And he hit me! You, some master of cheating you turn out to be. When I came to, the victim was already dead, is that it? That's why I couldn't reveal who I really was. If it came out that I was in league with the Smith, I'd be sus I'd be a suspect for sure. Well, where does this leave us? M madness! This is madness! I'm dreaming! It must have been me who was hit for the bottle list, and I'm imagining all of this! It appears our prosecution is at his wit's end, and frankly, I can't blame him. Mr. Gavin, what do you think about this turn of events? M Mr. Gavin, sir? I believe that, as the defense in this case, we are compelled to call Miss Orley a big fat liar. What? There were in three were in that room the night of the murder. The defendant, victim, and her. And she has a motive. A motive? Her plot foiled. The witness got into an argument with her client, Mr. Smith. And the denouement of that argument was murder. What? I didn't... I'm no killer. It's a trap. Someone's trying to frame me. <laughs> what tangled webs we weave when we practice to deceive. So tangled we catch ourselves in the process. M Mr. Wright! Such a hasty conclusion. It's not like you, Christoph Gavin. What are you saying? Why not consider the other possibility? That there was another person in the room at the time of the murder. Right. Like Mr. Wright was saying before, before recess. A single card was swapped into the victim's card after the murder. And the one who swapped the card didn't know two colors of cards were being used. Fourth person. Ha! This theory again! Your fourth, fourth person doesn't exist! Indeed. That's why I decided to bring this case to court. Here, where there's no escape and no chance for deception. The perfect place to catch the real criminal. Real criminal? We're in luck. A clue to the criminal's identity was kindly provided for us. And right at the beginning of the trial, no less. What? Apollo, perhaps you know what I'm talking about. Um, sorry. Remember what I said. The fourth person who swapped the cards made one critical error. He or she wasn't considering the color on the backs of the cards. Right, but how could such an obvious mistake occur? The cards used for the last game was, were red. Yet, there is one person here in our court who thought those cards were blue. Yeah, I had that impression too, but why? Well, Apollo, think we can figure out who it was? It's not me, I swear! Who is this fourth person? Why do I always get put on the spot like this? Let's hear what the defense has to say. Who was it? Who thought the cards used in the final game were blue? As I expected. Your eyes and ears are as sharp as your hair. I, I was right? Christoph Gavin, you were the fourth person that night. But, but of course Mr. Gavin knows the color of the cards. How could he? As you can see, the photo of the crime scene is black and white. You can't tell which of the cards are blue. It wasn't the floor or the table. But look! You can see the colors in this photo! Yes, but when he said the cards were blue, it was well before this evidence came to light. It's true that the defendant was engaged in a game of poker with the victim. Yet it was only that, a game, in the purest sense, a competition, Your Honor. A competition? Yes, a test of wits, a silent clash of passions. Only the cards, the backs wreathed in blue flame, know its final outcome. Well, Christoph? 
Mr. Gavin? Mr. Gavin, is something the matter? Hmm? No, nothing. Excuse me, I was just... It was just so... Sudden. Right. You aren't seriously accusing me, are you? Oh, Kristoff. You know I... Even I'd never take a joke this far. This has gone beyond ridiculous, beyond dumb. This is insanity. The defendant accused his own defense attorney of murder. I assure you, I'm quite sane. But what possible connection could Mr. Gavin have to the victim? I wasn't aware that I had a connection to Mr. Smith either. Yes, but Mr. Gavin and the victim have never even met. Well, what if they have? Huh? There is a possibility, after all. They may have met that night, before the game started. What are you suggesting? Is this the truth Mr. Wright was staying silent about? Well, only one thing to do. Mr. Wright, the defense would like to request- The defense would like to request no such thing. Mr. Gavin? Testimonies must relate to the case. How could anything happening before that game of poker be related? I'm not sure I follow, Mr. Gavin. As I explained before, the defense believes that Miss Orley... Am I to assume you speak for Mr. Justice in this? He is the defense, not you. Mr. Justice, the matter of Mr. Wright's testimony is up to you. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. Does the court, in your opinion, need to hear Mr. Wright's testimony? Yes. This was Mr. Wright's strategy. He was planning this all along, and I intend to see it through. The defense would like to request that Mr. Wright testify to the court. The two, Justice. You will betray me, the teacher? I'm sorry, Mr. Gavin. This isn't about loyalty. This is about the truth. Very well. The defendant, Mr. Wright, will take the stand, please. An evening, Christoph and I had dinner, and we sat at the table in this photograph. Shady Smith walked in five minutes after Christoph left. When the trap failed, Smith hit the waitress. The girl was knocked out cold, and Smith was unc uncontrollable. I left to call the police. When I returned, he was dead, blood streaming from a cut on his forehead. That's when I made another phone call to defense attorney Gavin. Mr. Gavin! You were at the Borscht Bowl. You were at the Borscht Bowl Club the night of the murder. I dined with him rather frequently. Uh, uh, he talked to the defendant on the phone directly after the murder. Quite against my will, I had become involved in a murder. I thought I might be in need of a lawyer, so I called him. But how did you know? Like if you called when Olga was knocked out, how did you know that there was a murder? You were planning this all along, weren't you, Wright? Just because you wanted to drag me into your little murder trial. The only thing I want is the truth. As I did back then, and now. I thought my office was doing you a favor when we took on your defense. It appears that I was wrong. Very well. The defense may cross-examine the witness. Justice. S sir! He's lying, and you're going to expose him. Uh, understood, sir. Mr. Gavin versus Mr. Wright. This can't end well. Why can't I have a normal trial? Hmm. About this failed trap. This is the same trap that Miss Olga Orley mentioned. The plan was simple, elegant really. You see, we set up a trap of sorts. I was to plant a card in Wright's pocket beforehand, and then deal five aces during one of their games. When their hands were revealed, Smith would call out him out and search Wright. He would then pull out the planted card, and the trap would snap shut. You saw up the cards. Yeah, we get it. Just like that, the legend would be dashed to pieces. 
Yes. A harmless prank, in essence. It was by a quick of faith that I happened to... Faith that I happened to discover it. A, a quirk? Did it say quirk? I thought it said quick. Can't read, apparently. I happened to put my hand in my pocket and found a card. The card she planted! Yes, I snuck a peek at it and found it was a five of hearts. I had a feeling something might happen, so I disposed of the card. Before the game. Disposed? Where? It was an empty bottle of grape juice I had been drinking right beside me. I threw the card inside the bottle. An empty bottle of grape juice? The murder weapon? Yes, I rolled it up and shoved it in. The colored glass makes it hard to see. Hmm, my battle of wits between the deceiver and the would-be deceived. That sounds like a terrific drama. The card inside the murder weapon. That's strange. Did the police miss it in their investigation? Maybe I'll take a look. Mr. Wright, the poker head of courtroom number three approves of this battle of wits. Please revise your testimony with this new information. I discovered the chapter in the game and this was the card in the bottle. Hmm. Really? Can I not do the thing? Ugh, that's annoying. The bottle is completely empty. Um, Mr. Wright, if I may. Yes? I've examined the bottle and I don't see any card in here. Hmm, no? What? Mr. Wright, surely isn't all you have to say for yourself? I can't say that I know what happened to the card. I did put it in that bottle, however. Huh? Perhaps a fifth person came and took it out. Oh, and a sixth person could have helped. Mr. Gavin, Mr. Wright is your client. My apologies, Your Honor. I won't have you dis disparaging our investigation either. We looked inside that bottle, and there was nothing. So what's going on? M is Mr. Wright hoodwinking us again? <laughs> Is Mr. Wright hoodwinking us again? Or did the card just disappear? In any case, please continue the cross-examination. I'm afraid decisive contradictions for call for decisive evidence. Oh! Push him harder, Justice. Break him. It's just you and the witness in the ring. Go for the KO. Ugh. But I get the feeling we're not on our client's side anymore. was knocked down. Uh, I'm saving five. When I return, that's the one. Prime photo number one. Objection! Mr. Wright, if I may. Yes. Take a look at this photograph of the, of the crime scene. See the victim here? He's wearing a hat. I wouldn't think you could see blood on his forehead. Good point. Justice. Next time you point out an inconsistency, put a little more oomph into it. Mr. Wright, can you explain this to the court? Ah, I forgot to mention something. I was the one who put that hat on his head. Eh? <laughs> Phoenix, what the hell are you... What the fuck are you doing, my, that, my dude? You? You put the hat on, hat on the dead man's head? wore it through our entire poker game. After calling the police when I returned to the scene. His head was in full view. Shining bright, just like in this photograph. And? I picked his hat up off the ground, of the floor, and put it on his head. What? Why did you do a thing like that? All I can say is, I'm sorry. And that's the only thing I touched at the crime scene. 
So Miss Orley didn't see it. It being the victim's, uh, his head. I think not. She was out cold. I believe I was the only one who witnessed his head. Ah, here we go again. Mr. Gavin? Ahem. Pardon. It just seems that our client is determined to lie his way through this case. Hmm. Hey, he's still our client, isn't he? I don't know what keeps, like, connecting and disconnecting. I believe that's enough of that. Uh, Mr. Gavin? This witness's testimony is more of a travesty. It's riddled with lies. I'm beginning to see how you came to lose your attorney's badge seven years ago. Well, you certainly have a unique way of treating your clients, Christoph. I never knew. I believe it was you who threw the first stone. Mr. Wright, if you intend to ever tell the truth about this case, it's now or never. Don't be misled. I haven't told a single lie here. Eh? When I noticed the trap, I put the card in the bottle to dispose of it. And when I put the hat on the victim's head, let's just say I had a reason for doing that as well. A, a reason? And the reason is right here. Your cell phone? That night, recall that I spoke with defense attorney Gavin after calling the police. Just in case, I recorded our conversation. What's this? Now that we're all here, I see no reason why I shouldn't play it back for the court. Christoph, I seem to be in a bit of trouble. What's this? Game not going well? Something like that. That gentleman who challenged you, he turned out to be good? He turned out to be dead. Someone hit him. Hard. You mean someone cracked that flawless bone china... That flawless bone china plate. It wasn't you, was it? Me? Please. The cops should be here any minute. I'm in your hands. Should it come to that. Bone china plates. A kind of porcelain. Very smooth and shiny. An odd plate, but pate. Oh. Pate? I believe he was referring to a certain gentleman's balding forehead. I thought it was plate myself. Hmm. The court appreciates the defendant's discretion in not indicating my forehead. Wait a second. Something's not right about that phone call. So after Mr. Gavin ate dinner with you, he left the Borscht Bull Club. Most well, certainly. Then... Then how did he know? When did he see this bone china pate? Ah, oh, that's right. Yes. That was when I began to see my good friend in a different light. Trouble. I returned to the crime scene. And when I spotted Mr. Smith's head again, I realized exactly what was wrong. Well, Mr. Gavin, the stage has been set. Perhaps you would like to explain this to the court. Exactly how did you come by your privileged knowledge of the victim's head? So, this is your reason. The reason why you put the victim's head hat back on. Your point, Mr. Gavin? It's come down to this, has it, Phoenix Wright? Order! I will have order! Mr. Payne! Yes, Your Honor? I believe this court has been left with no other choice. Are you prepared to hear Defense Attorney's Gavin's, Attorney Gavin's testimony? <laughs> well, as the prosecutor, I... Very well. We'll break for ten minutes. After which, Mr. Gavin will take the stand for a cross-examination. Are we all clear on that? Crystal clear, Your Honor. Very well. This will be the final recess of the day. For the day. Mr. Gavin and Mr. Wright are both in the judge's chamber. Who would have thought today would turn out like this? May I? Who this? Huh? What? Hello, sir. Please pick a card. Wh what's all this about? Uh, is this one okay? Excellent. I have a message for you. The last hand is about to be played. You'll need a trump card to make it. A, a trump card? The card you have chosen is magical. Use it wisely, and the game is yours. That's all. 
Ace. Where do I remember that card from? Mr. Smith's hand has three aces, and Mr. Wright's two. It's five aces in all. It is true. I have seen it. The fifth ace. There was cheating, I swear to you. Missing fifth ace. Wait. This blotch of red. Is this blood? You have your trump card. Now it's up to you to cut the deck and draw. The truth. My father's fate is in your hands. I know you can do it. This bloodstained card is my trump card for finding the truth. <laughs> this is not... I fell deep into thought as my mind raced to understand what this all meant. A girl. I'd seen her recently, but where? That's when I made the connection. Court will now reconvene. Defense Attorney Krista. Gavin, will you please take the stand? Now then, if you would, Mr. Payne. Y yes, Your Honor. Um, will Mr. Um, the, the witness state his name and occupation? Is this boss necessary, Your Honor? Um, she's not up here, so we can't- we don't know her age. Believe me, far stranger things have gone in this courtroom. I remember we once had to cross-examine a parrot. That was a hoot. Fine, but play along. First, there is one thing we need to have made clear. How did you know about the secret beneath the victim's hat? My secret? I'm guessing he means the fact that Mr. Smith was bald. Give my curiosity. But what is this about this what is it about this fellow's head? Your honor seems to have an inordinate interest in it. I wouldn't call it inordinate, Mr. Gavin. But Mr. Wright! What do you think you're doing, Wright? Wow, things sure look different from the other side of you side, you know what I mean, Apollo? Speaking of looking from the other side. Let's consider something for, for a second. The victim wore that hat all night, never once taking it off, except for that one time. One time? Being the instant he was hit! Oh! When Mr. Wright returned from reporting the crime, the hat was lying on the floor. Mr. Wright picked it up and placed it on the victim's head. In other words, in order to have seen Mr. Smith's bald head, he would have had to be at the scene of the crime, at the time of the crime. In other words, you would have to be the real killer, is what you're trying to say. Not bad, Apollo. <laughs> Mr. Gavin, I'm afraid that I haven't been entirely honest with the court. What? Oh, I assure you, I had the noblest of intentions. I did it all to protect my client, Mr. Wright. Yet, I am afraid in the current situation, I see little reason to hide anything. Very well. Allow me to tell you the truth of what happened that night. Finally, you may begin your, your testimony. Tell us, how were you involved in the events of that fateful night? The rage I sensed in that man that night troubled me, so I returned to the club. I went down to the basement and peeked in through the little window into the hideout. It must have been right after the murder took place. The victim was dead, as he appears in the photo. A bald head, an unconscious girl, and Wright holding a bottle in his hand. I sensed that was not the best place for me to be at the time, and so I left. That's when the call came from Wright. So, you witnessed the murder. For better or worse. I missed the actual moment of the deed. Mr. Gavin, may I remind you that you are on Mr. Wright's defense team. Your testimony is clearly disadvantageous to your client. 
what else could I say? I'm standing it on the witness stand, after all. So you are, Mr. Gavin. And you had to testify as you just did. You had to tell them you saw the scene of the crime through that little window. Uh, Mr. Wright? You had to say that. Because that was the only probable window of opportunity. Right, Apollo? Oh! Mr. Wright, the defense should do the cross-examination, not the defendant. Mr. Justice, are you prepared? Yes, Your Honor. I can't believe I'm going up against Mr. Gavin. This trial is getting weirder and weirder. Welcome to Ace Attorney, Apollo. May you enjoy your stay. <laughs> okay, we gotta get to a bald head. Those were the only three at the scene of the crime. Yes, as far as I saw, at least. Then we're back where we started. The killer was the defendant, Phoenix Wright. Who else could it have been? But, why didn't you talk to the police? Two reasons. First, I didn't actually witness the very moment of the crime. Second, my office was asked to defend Wright. Even after seeing what, had, what I had seen, I couldn't abandon my friend. Hmm. There must have been someone else there at the moment, a moment of the crime. Justice, I just said I saw no one, not a soul. But, but that goes against what Mr. Wright said. Ah, yes, this mysterious false person. Who would conveniently be the real killer, I suppose. Not to see we agree, Mr. Gavin. Let me pose a question then. Tell me, what possible reason did the real killer have to swap cards in the victim's hand? Hmm? Perhaps you can show us a reason why such a thing would be necessary. How can I show something I can't find myself? Remember, Apollo, the card that was swapped out was the fifth ace. The fifth ace, right. Well, Mr. Justice, the question of why the killer would swap out a card has been raised. Can you point to a reason? Show evidence. It's now or never. The defense would like to present evidence to the court. Evidence showing the reason why a card was swapped out. Then go ahead and point out your reason, Mr. Justice. And why did the killer take the fifth ace? My reason is, uh, this. Is that an ace? Why? Well, it's got blood on it. Right next to the spade. What? This is insane! Why wasn't I told about this? Why? Could this be... Could this be the missing fifth ace? In inconceivable! How could you? What are you doing with that card? Um, well, that's the thing. Why is Mr. Gavin so upset? It's just a fishy card from some fishy girl. Oh. That card, it's mine. That is, I picked it up at the Borscht Bowl Club that night after the murder had occurred. I gave it to my daughter. Cards are her stock, stock in trade, after all. Ah, yes, just give your... Give your daughter a... A, 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 a blood-stained card. That makes sense. No. Impossible. Unacceptable. The court can't accept this evidence. It's a fraud. A fraud? How can you be so sure? Wh what? I would think the only person who could claim it was a fraud would be the one who took the real card from the crime scene. The real killer. Allow me to elaborate. What if this trace of blood was the reason? The reason for... <laughs> for the killer to take the card from the scene of the crime. Where are you going with this? It will make sense. And you will cry. Take another look at the photo and at the victim's head. At the moment of the crime, his hat fell to the floor. And a trickle of blood ran from his forehead down the back of his head. Couldn't a drop of that blood have fallen on one of the cards? I suppose. The killer then took the card to hide the blood. 
regardless, that evidence is non-permissible. Oh? Right. Regardless of how you wasted the last seven years, you used to be a lawyer. You know what a serious crime it is to conceal evidence. Oh, we can discuss the finer points of our legal system later. What's important now is that I've answered your question. What are you talking about? You wanted to know why the killer would have taken a cart from the crime scene? And now, I've told you. That one drop of blood would have been decisive evidence, you see. Th this is baseless conjecture. Baseless. Well, I assure you, it's quite based. Wh what? It's amazing, really. How a single drop of blood on a single card can lead us to the truth. It's quite simple. Well, Apollo? Y yes? Try picturing the scene for the crime, of the crime, in your head. The murder took place in the hideout. The body of the luckless victim was found at the poker table. And before the killer swapped the card out, there was a single card with a drop of blood on it in the victim's hand. Given this, there is one decisive problem with the scene. Well, what is it? Let's keep it simple, shall we? Given that there was a drop of blood on a card, whose position in this diagram doesn't fit? The victims? The killers? The witnesses? The second witnesses? Whose position doesn't fit with the bloody card? Victim. Well, isn't it the victim's position that's the problem? I don't follow your logic here, Mr. Justice. Well, look, the victim was struck on the he head, sending him back in his chair. You'd think any blood would fall behind the body, not onto the table in front of him. Ah. Take a look at the photo again. If he bled in this position, the blood would fall on the floor, not on the cards. Why, that's right. So what does this mean? Incidentally, we were sitting in swivel chairs. S swivel chairs? Oh man. Apollo, try turning the chair around. The, the chair was facing the other way. It would have to be. So we have to assume that at the time of the murder, the victim's chair was facing away from the table. When Mr. Wright returned from informing the police, which way was the chair facing? When I came back to the room, the body was facing a scene in this photo. I would mean the killer turned the chair back around. Let's take the next step. Look at the diagram once more. We, now, we know now the victim was facing away from the table at the time of the murder. But this creates another significant contradiction. Again? Let's test your reasoning skills again, shall we? Apollo, whose location on this diagram con contradicts our new understanding of the crime? The victims and the killers, the witnesses, the second witnesses? Whose location creates a contradiction if the victim is facing away? The victim was struck from the front, correct? Indeed. Well, wouldn't it be hard for the killer to hit him from the front? Sitting where his indicator currently is? I would think it would be quite diff quite hard, yes. Yes, but what you're saying makes no sense! Why would the victim suddenly turn to face the wall in the middle of a game? I believe a sufficient reason will, come s will soon come to light. What? There's something in this diagram that makes far less sense, actually. Look again at the diagram. Apollo, if the victim was struck while he was sitting as shown here, where would his assailant be standing? Try marking it on the diagram. What? But... There's no room to put a mark where the killer should be. Don't worry. Let's think it through and see what we'll find. We know the victim was facing toward the wall at the time of the crime. That's the only thing we know for sure. Try to forget about everything else. Where would the killer have to be standing to strike our victim from the front? Danger! 
The killer had to be standing well- Uh, here! You get points for flair, but that's about all you get. Uh, thought I was onto something there too. I hardly need to point out that standing there would be impossible. The victim is facing a solid cupboard. Or are you claiming the killer climbed the cupboard and hit them from above? <laughs> it's simple logic, really. If this was the only place the killer could have been standing, then that means that at the very moment of the crime... Wait, I know! At the moment of the crime, the cupboard wasn't there! What's this now? I mean, that's the only explanation. Right, Mr. Gavin? Your Honor, I have a suggestion for the defense. We should arrange the, the we should arrange to examine the cupboard in the hideout immediately. Bailiff, send the team to the crime scene immediately. Have them try to move the cupboard. Ha, huh, your honor. What? There's one more thing your men should look for. Please give this to the bailiff. Hmm. Hmm. Yes, I see. You do belong in the courtroom after all, Mr. Wright. I do my best. But let's forge ahead here while we wait. Forge, you say. Interesting. Interesting choice of words there. Look at the diagram once again. It's been changed. If the killer was standing here at the time of the crime. And this cupboard wasn't here. Which means... Apollo, try moving the cupboard. Huh. Interesting. Interesting. Suddenly... Um... Christoph's uh, witness testimony doesn't hold up. Thank you. As you can see, the cupboard was the problem. At the time of the murder, it has to have been. It has to have been as shown here. Now everything is in place to reconstruct the moment of the crime. Oh my! What's this? What is it now? Look at the diagram of the crime scene once more. It appears we found yet another contradiction. What I believe to be the final contradiction, in fact. Huh? Oh, no, that's not... Huh? Oh, dang! Notice something, Apollo? The line of deduction is rapidly approaching its logical conclusion. Now then, Mr. Justice, please point to the new contradicting in indicator. Is it the victim, the killer, the witness, the second witness? Which indicator in this diagram contradicts what we know about the crime? What are you looking at, huh? Huh, what are you looking at? You're looking at a wall? You're looking at a cupboard? <laughs> Loser. Um, about this cupboard. Are we all okay with assuming it was moved? Sure, why not? Well, if it was, something really doesn't fit. The cupboard would completely cover up the window to the stairs. That's right. Someone standing outside wouldn't be able to see in. Someone like Mr. Gavin! What? What did you say? Oh, is the coolest defense in the West losing his cool? <laughs> Don't expect me to play along with your little game, right? It's only a game until someone gets killed, Mr. Gavin. And someone was, while the window to that room was blocked by a cupboard. So, Mr. Gavin, perhaps you'd like to explain to the court exactly where did you witness the crime scene from? <laughs> Excuse me, Your Honor. Order! This is a court of law and I will have order! We we just now received word from our investiga investigative team at the Borscht Bowl Club. They've examined the cupboard and the hideout, Your Honor. No? Oh, and what they find? Well, Your Honor. It turns out, there is a secret passage behind it. What? Ah, uh, yes, I believe I mentioned something of the sort before. This is one of the tricks to the room of many, room many of our regulars know about. I do remember him saying something about that now that he mentions it. A secret passage is a handy thing to have when you're engaged in illegal goings-on. You never know when you might need to duck away from the eyes of the law. So the room has a secret passage. Where does it go? The other side connects to the restaurant above. The underworld bosses could get away from the cops. 
and enjoy a cold bowl of borscht, no doubt. Just like our killer. You see where our line of simple deductive reasoning has led us, Apollo? I see it, but I don't believe it. That girl wasn't kidding when she said I needed this trump card for the last hand. At the time of the murder, the window was blocked in the victim's hat. It was only off his head for the few minutes between Mr. Smith's murder and Mr. Wright's return from calling the cops. In other words, the only place anyone could have seen the victim's ripped bald head was from inside the hideout. Well, Mr. Gavin? Come on, say something. Hmm. Dare I ask what really happened that night? Actually, I think we can probably figure it out ourselves at this point. That night, for whatever reason, our killer had a date with Mr. Smith. A date with Destiny. There he crouched, hidden in the secret passageway behind the cupboard. Holding his breath, waiting for just the right moment. Then the chance came, and he took it. What? Why did you do that? Are you here? I get help. Miss Olga Orly was out cold, struck by Mr. Smith. When his time was soon to come, Mr. Wright went upstairs to call the cops. Leaving Mr. Shady Smith alone in the hideout with the unconscious dealer. Then our killer stepped out from the secret passage and into the hideout. The victim must have heard the cupboard sliding aside. He wheeled his chair around to look and... After the deed was done, the criminal must have seen the blood on the card. He would have, of course, realized the need to destroy the evidence. That single spot of blood told the whole story of the crime. Too bad for him he didn't linger any longer in the hideout that night. If he had, he might have noticed the cards on the floor. And the fact that they were all red. <laughs> Well, it seems this trial has taken yet another turn. I'm truly, truly sorry I had to see this day come, Mr. Gavin. Mr. Gavin? Mr. Payne! Yeah? <clears throat> yes, Your Honor? The prosecution will continue its investigation. As for Mr. Phoenix Wright, the defendant, he is hereby cleared of all suspicion. Believe me when I say that I don't believe this is happening, Mr. Gavin. But I'm afraid circumstances call for me to issue a warrant for your arrest. Immediately. Oh, no need to apologize. I rather enjoyed myself. It's not every day you get to witness a legendary attorney's dirty tactics firsthand. Your point, Mr. Gavin? Frankly, Your Honor, I'm shocked that a person of your caliber would st would be taken in by such a low-grade politic. Um, excuse me? The defendant is cleared of all suspicion? This is hardly the time for jokes, Your Honor. Mr. Wright hasn't proved anyone's guilt or innocence here. What he has done is use illegal evidence to put the blame on someone else. And not just anyone else, but me, his own defense attorney. I illegal evidence. Objection. Let me ask you, Mr. Gavin. Is there still any reason at present to suspect me of wrongdoing? Of course. This bottle, for instance. The bottle of grape juice Mr. Wright was drinking. How do you intend to explain away the fingerprints on the murder weapon? And not just any fingerprints. Am I right, Mr. Payne? Uh, actually, yes. The fingerprints on the bottle were um, upside down. I seem to recall this being an issue earlier. The court, in this case, demand an explanation. I can think of only one reason why one would hold the bottle upside down. Really? Really? I demonstrated earlier the stream. Th that's not fucking necessary. And that is to hit someone with the bottom of the bottle. 
Oh, Your Honor. Hmm. Ah, see how the codfish squirms to the last. Well, Apollo? Y yes? Your boss seems awfully concerned about this bottle still. But I'm sure you can come up with a suitable explanation, just like that. Um, yeah. Just like what? Why would anyone grab a bottle upside down other than to... <laughs> Don't let him trick you into thinking his explanation is the only legitimate one. Um, is there really another? Take another look at the court record. I believe you'll find a simple answer there, in plain sight. Um, how about you just say the answer in plain words? It would be hasty to deliver a verdict with unanswered questions, indeed. Well, Mr. Justice? Mr. Gavin said that the court and this case demand an explanation. Don't worry. Justice won't leave until justice is done. Perhaps the defense would care to enlighten the court. What evidence do you explain? Do you have to explain why the fingerprints on the bottle were upside down? Wait, it doesn't say anything. One. No, not that one. This one. It's actually easier to show you than explain, Your Honor. Place that bottle on the floor next to your chair. Excuse me? On the floor? Yes. Now reach down and pick it up. Without getting out of your chair. Ah. See? You naturally go to pick it up by the bottle of its neck. Of the bottle by its neck. With your fingers. Upside down. Look at this photograph taken on the night of the murder. The defendant is right side here. Playing piano, bottles of grape juice on the floor to the side of his piano bench. He would have naturally picked up the bottles upside down several times. Wow, I can't believe it was that simple. We call our dinner that evening. Christoph. My mom is here to get some bread. Okay. Recall our, e our dinner that evening, Kristoff. I was drinking my usual juice then, too. Get the bread. Oh, hi! Welcome to the stream. I'm sorry, what kind of... I can't even fucking think of the word. I'm just so dumbfounded by this. Hold on. Basically, you used the bottle on the table to do the deed. And then you must have remembered. So you went and picked up one of the bottles from under the, the piano. And you switched the bottles. You took one of Mr. Wright's bottles and made it look like the murder weapon. Order! 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 What do you have to say to these charges, Mr. Mr. Gavin? Fascinating. So this is the legendary, Tony's famed tactic of misdirection. What? You claim that I switched the bottle. Where's your proof? Proof? Well, that's, uh... As I thought, more baseless conjecture. I'm afraid your bottle of proof is quite empty. I wouldn't be so sure about that. Your Honor. When you initiated the investigation of the hideout earlier, do you recall I requested an additional investigation? Ah, yes. I have your memo about that here. 
retrieve the bottles from under the piano at the Borscht Bowl Club. And here's one of the bottles in question. Hmm. What are you going to dust that for fingerprints too? I would be surprised if anywhere on that but his. Mr. Gavin probably wouldn't have made such a novice mistake, true. That bottle won't bear a trace of anything. Say, Apollo. Yes. Why don't you go ahead and examine that bottle? But, but why? Just humor me. Mr. Wright. That bottle will solve this case once and for all. What? That's some bottle. Still can't use that. Oh, that's annoying. Oh, would you look at this? There's something inside the bottle. What's this? Oh my god, it can't be. Recall that unpleasant woman's testimony for a moment. Uh, Miss Olga Orly? Yes, her little swindling Devochka. That night, I planted the card like I was supposed to, and Wright lost the last hand, just like he was supposed to. Then Smith searched him. But the, but the planted card was gone! The trap failed! Wait, this isn't... You're telling me that this is the planted card you disposed of? The one you mentioned in this piece of testimony? I happened to put my hand in my pocket and found a card. Yes, I snuck a peek at it and found it was a five of hearts. I had a feeling something might happen, so I disposed of the card before the game. Disposed? Where? It was an empty bottle of grape juice I had been drinking right beside me. I threw the card inside the bottle. Five of hearts. This is the card. The bottles were swapped. And the only one who could have done that was the fourth person in the club that night. You! Mr. Christoph Gavin. That is all. Is this your idea of revenge, Phoenix Wright? Revenge? Revenge for the events that took away your attorney's badge seven years ago. My past is like my logic, straight and true. Nothing's changed. All I did was point the finger of justice in the proper direction. Fine. I'm glad we could have this little... Tita-tit. <laughs> tita tit Right. This is insane! What about me? Don't I get to prosecute anyone? What happened? What do you mean what happened? I believe this time we've really come to, we finally come to the end of our trial. Mr. Payne, do you have a report for us on Christoph Gavin? He's admitted everything. We're processing his arrest now. Oh, we will find that out. I see. Still, one has to wonder why he would do such a thing. He didn't even have a connection to the victim, did he? Uh, none that we know of. Mr. Wright, have you anything to add? I'm afraid I can't shed any more light on the matter. About this victim, Mr. Shady Smith. His occupation was listed as traveler. An odd profession, to be sure. And that's all we know about him. We know about him, I'm sorry. I'll read your follow-up investigation, your honor. Good. Mr. Wright. Yes? Seven years, and you still haven't lost your touch. Christoph Gavin was a man with much significance for me. Both as a friend and a lawyer. 
He was extremely talented, to be sure. I needed two things before I could confront him. The first was a place where no injustice would be tolerated. Court this courtroom. The second was a man who would tolerate no injustice. In other words, a defense attorney. You, Apollo. M me A dark time is coming for our legal system. A twisting of justice brought on by our very own court system. We have to set it right. Mr. Wright! Our work lies ahead of us. Ahead of us. And I, for one, am looking forward to it. Well, this seems like a good time to announce a verdict. This court finds the defendant, Mr. Phoenix Wright. Sweet. Court adjourned. Hmm. Thanks, Apollo. You came through, just like I thought you would. I'm pretty sure I didn't do a thing in there. It was you who cornered Mr. G uh, the killer. I couldn't have done it by myself. You sensed it too, today, didn't you? Your ability. Ability? Yes, a sensitivity I lack. You'll come to understand it soon enough. Wait, I wonder if he means... I have one question for the witness, then. You say you saw the moment, of, moment the defendant hit the victim. Is this true? Of course it's true. What's this weird vibe I'm getting? What, what was that, Mr. Wright? You'll have to find the answer to that question yourself. The answer, right. Today was full of questions without answers, most of them about Mr. Gavin. What possible reason could he have had to commit murder? Perhaps you'll learn that in the days to come. Huh? Wait. You don't know, do you? This locket is the key. Huh? Oh, that reminds me. I met the, the girl whose picture is in your locket. Your daughter, right? That's right. She's my daughter. You know, you were right about this locket. Eh? I took this off his neck the night he died. But it looks like our dear Russian scam artist saw me. So the truth is, this locket really did belong to him. Wait, but that's perjury! You testified! You said that locket was yours! I said no such thing, actually. Huh? I merely said that it was a locket with my daughter's pictures inside. A subtle distinction, but a distinction nonetheless. And it's the truth. Wait, but then, why? Why was the victim wearing a locket with a picture of your daughter inside it? Sometimes the straightest path to the truth isn't the best one. Give it time. You're still just getting started with your career. Speaking of which, I may be out of a job. I work for Gavin Law Offices after all. I still can't believe I just saw Mr. Gavin get led away in handcuffs. Apollo. Yes? How about... Coming to work for me. Huh? You mean, at the Wright & Co. law offices? I mean, there's not a single attorney in my generation that doesn't know of it. I can't imagine that to be true, but... Wait, but didn't you... You're not a... Well, I turned my... Turn in my badge, yes. I'm not an attorney anymore. That incident seven years ago. Legendary trial. And at the middle of it all was one man, Phoenix Wright. The case reached its sad conclusion, and he left law for good. Have you ever thought about coming back to the courts? I am not qualified to stand in a court of law, I'm afraid. Didn't you notice in today's trial? There was a single piece of forged evidence. This is when I fucking cried. <laughs> Let me fucking tell you, I was like, Phoenix? I can't believe you would do this to me! <laughs> Forged evidence? What are you talking about? I'm talking about evidence that shouldn't have existed. A naughty magician's trick. Hmm, one piece of evidence struck me as odd. It's true. It just seemed, well, too perfect. I'll bet this was the forged evidence. You mean this, don't you? 
I got this from your, um, your daughter, Miss Wright. Yes, that card couldn't have been found at the crime scene. Why? Because the killer took it with him when he left. Leaving the wrong card in its place, luckily for us. The court can't accept this evidence. It's a fraud. A fraud? How can you be so sure? I would think the only person who could claim it was a fraud would be the one who took the real card from the crime scene. The real killer. My verdict, was, my verdict was already handed down. Seven years ago. Then, you're really... Yes, I forged this card. To quote myself from when I first played this. I trusted you! I loved you! <laughs> Look at the crime scene. Should have told you it wasn't real. But you can't do something like that and call yourself an attorney. Who's calling themselves an attorney, Apollo? So it's true. The rumor is true. Seven years ago. None of that matters much now, does it? <laughs> I, I punched him. It's your story from here on out, out, Apollo. Perhaps I can help you turn the next page. My office's address. My office's address. Drop in if you like. Mr. Wright. I'll buy your uppercut. Try yelling, take that, next time. I find it packs a little more punch. And Apollo, thanks for today. I had a good time. And with that... Mr. Wright walked out the door, and that's how my first trial ended. A lot of mysteries went unsolved, and at the time, I had no idea they were all related. Rel related. Every mystery that day, connected by a single thread of logic. I'd find that out soon enough. My name is Apollo Justice, attorney at law, and this is how my story begins. Yeah, that was the <laughs> I feel cheated. <laughs> Welcome to my life. So yeah, that was the that was the beginning of Apollo Justice. <laughs> also, um if I recall correctly, uh his daughter is hold on, let me actually look this up. Damn, is she fifteen? She's fifteen. So, well, it's been seven years since he lost his badge. We know that for a fact. So it's been at least seven years. And also he was 26 in the uh, Trials and Tribulations. So in the third game, he was 26. And uh, now he's 33. So you do the math, or I can do it for you. Hold on. 33 minus 26. It's been seven years, pretty much. And I've been like thinking, you know, uh, when we when we played investigations and we saw that 
Phoenix and Maya were in the background, you know, in that case where uh, Edgeworth gave up his badge. I'm like, what if this is like at the same time when Phoenix lost his badge? Like, oh my god, they lost their badge at the same time. <laughs> I just thought about that. And... Yeah. So he is 33. And 15 years ago, he would have to have been... 18. And... That is fully possible. <laughs> How old was he when he met Dahlia and Iris? Yes, I am. I am well aware. I am well aware. <laughs> Wait. <laughs> but see, that's the thing I found really. <laughs> that boy did not fuck. Listen. Listen. It was supposed to be Edgeworth. <laughs> I'm just saying my thoughts when I first played this game back in 20. 17 i believe 2016 2017 no, it has to have been 2017 and i'm just saying because i felt so betrayed <laughs> uh. <laughs> Like I said, the thing that I found really strange is that if it's Iris's kid, um, surely there would have been some mention about that in Trials and Tribulations when they meet again, right? Right? Or like some mention about it like anywhere. But also, would there be? Would that be one of the reasons why she was just like dropped off at that mountain temple? I'm just like, like trying to like make you question what's happening. I know exactly what's happening. That's what, the, that's the fun of it. And I don't want anyone to say what's actually happening, but <laughs> yes. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. It's only gonna go get worse. It's fine. So, yeah. Phoenix came back. Made us... Uh, show forged evidence. <laughs> have you have you played this game before by the way i just like need to know <laughs> hold on let me add some music actually he held hands with the girl No, it wasn't before college. How old was he when uh, doing that trial again? I don't remember exactly. Unless there was someone before 
Iris and Delia. Dolly, I mean. I called her Delia back then. So that's just kind of like stuck in my head. Because, as a matter of fact, you're right. He was 21 when he was in college. You're right. He was 21 when he met Dahlia. His darling Dolly. Anyways, I'll leave that there and I'll pick it up again on maybe Thursday or something. I don't know yet. Uh, I've kind of uh, neglected my other Twitch channel for a while. Just been way too depressed, you know, but I'm, I'm finally, I feel like I'm finally ready to get back into it there. So I'll either be back here on Wednesday or Thursday. I don't know yet. So I'm just gonna leave you with that. With all these doubts. In your mind. That will just... Make you question everything that Phoenix Wright is and was. <laughs> yes, I will. I will get some rest. <laughs> oh, I'm gonna sleep so well. Just being like, oh, I know exactly what's going on. Like, yeah. Anyways, what do you think of Apollo Justice so far? As in like the game and also the character. I really like the perceive feature. It's so cool. Apollo just is his baby. He is a little chicken nugget. <laughs> yep. Pretty much. But yeah. Oh god, I just I just want to spill I want to spill everything, but like oh he is small and loud. <laughs> and I love that about him. I love that for him. Anyways, with that, I am gonna go to bed. Listen, I'm also playing dumb right now. It's fine. It's perfectly fine. Like, thank you for doing that and not spoiling anything. I really appreciate that. This was like the game that like affected me the most. No, no, no. I thought the exact same thing. When I first played it. Oh my god! Same! Same! Just like Ace Attorney in general. Literally. I've been like playing like all the games up until this point. Literally. I just finished playing the second Investigations game today. <laughs> and I like last week I played like three episodes, or I had three streams in a row that lasted over 10 hours. 
I can just sit for hours and hours and play as attorney. Like the only reason I have to stop is because I'm I have to sleep and also because I have to eat. <laughs> but if it wasn't for those two things, I would just keep going, honestly. <laughs> But, you know, I need to take care of myself. Also, I didn't actually, like, want to, like, mention it, like, talk too much about it. But someone came in here and called me a fishbowl head. And I'm like, what does that even mean? <laughs> I just find it so funny because people show up with, like, the dumbest shit to say. I swear, it's only because I use the LGBTQIA plus tags. I swear, they just show up there and have come with like the, the worst fucking takes you've ever heard. <laughs> and then they're like, it's just a joke. <laughs> it's just a, it's just a prank. No, I'm pretty sure they were trying to uh, insult me. That's the word. I couldn't think of it up until now. A fucking bottom of the barrel um, insults. I guess it's because I have blue hair. It's a fishbowl head. Sure. I don't know. Uh, there was this one comment I got one. I didn't even get it at first. I was like, fishbowl head? <laughs> I once got like this person who was like, I don't think... Um, Something I, he was talk, talking something about burkas and he was saying that like you should be like uh, the the first choice I guess like to wear a burka because I'm so fucking ugly or something and I'm like I don't even understand what you mean and then it was like two days later I was like oh okay he just called me ugly but like with more words for some reason I don't know why he would do that but okay whatever floats your boat I guess and like I'm not here to fucking look pretty for you I, I'm sorry I don't look attractive to you. You have Google, you have... Uh, what the fuck else? You have... Listen, I'm... I'm here to play games. I'm not here to look very good, okay? I'm well aware. <laughs> Those insults make no sense at all. Exactly. Another one was like, So which of the only two genders are you? So I'm like, Ah, yeah, you're here because of the LGBTQIA plus tags. The funniest part is when they call it a, a, a joke. And the prank. Tamale. <laughs> yes. Listen, I responded to that, but like, do you mean tamales? Yeah, tamales. I believe actually tamales do belong in the kitchen for the most part. Yeah. <laughs> tamale. You mean tamale? Oh, uh, God, it's so dumb. Uh, it's just like... I, I, I feel like sad. <laughs> On their behalf, I'm also hungry. Because like they don't have anything better to do than go through fucking Twitch tags and insult the streamers for some fucking reason. It's like, get a better hobby. Fucking do something with your life. I don't fucking know. Go outside. And that comes from me. I don't do jack shit. I haven't been outside. In like a week. Last time, I guess, was when I went to pick up my groceries. And also go to McDonald's. <laughs> Priorities! <laughs> the, the, they also think they're so incredibly cool when they do it. So like, some other- There were like five people or something that came in at once and I'm like, just like sitting there like, Uh-huh, okay, I see. And then one of them were like, why did you ban them? They were kings, and I'm like, kings of what? The playground? <laughs> like, what the fuck is this? This is this is fucking playground antics. Like, but, uh, they sure are. They expect me to fucking start crying. 
over being called a fishbowl head. <laughs> like, it's just blue hair. Get over it. Like, <laughs> anyways, you know, it wouldn't it wouldn't be a Rainbow Dream stream if um, I didn't rant or ramble at the end of it. So with that, I hope I'll uh, hopefully I'll see you tomorrow on the Lazy Lily Gamer Mom Twitch where I will be back to playing some Okami then I'm ready I'm ready to tackle that fucking boss now I feel like I'm ready I'm finally ready and um, I don't know what my plans are for Wednesday yet but I will announce that tomorrow more closely so yeah with that peace Good night.